so it's uh, Tuesday, 28th August uh, 2018. I'm here at 2.18 uh, p.m. But I think it started at 2.17. And I'll put it as 2.18 p.m. I plucked some eyebrows over here. In, in my bathroom, so because there's better lighting, I try to pluck it here, but I guess better lighting here. I guess I gotta open this. Yeah, there's better lighting here. Um, shaved and uh, uh dress. Uh, well, I'm gonna apply the makeup. You know, there's a thing in there. Can, there you can shake it. Alright. <clears throat> um, yeah, so today is uh, my uh, second uh, uh, appointment or um, RCIA, the right of Christian initiation for adults. So today is my uh, second uh, session or appointment, whatever you want to call it. Oh, my skin, I, I uh, cut myself or something when I'm uh, shaving. Uh, Oh, this this facial hair thing is gonna take me a while. Oh, I'll try and do at least uh, four sessions a year, and gradually, I guess you know, the idea is to gradually get it, you know, down. So it's you know, patience, mm, patience. So I've seen a lot of videos on. Uh, Catholicism and vocation mainly. Um, I'm, I'm, I've been seeing a lot of videos on vocation, like because I don't know what I want to do with my life. But, um, so I've seen a lot of videos on uh, being a hermit. You know, and being single and all that. Um, there is, oh, you know, I've been reading up stuff on that. Oh, yeah, so that's what I've been doing. Mm, but I want to reduce my social media usage because uh, I want to spend more time. Uh, just contemplating, <laughs> trying to get more into a contemplative, you know, meditation or even reading, like, you know, because my mind is like so distracted, like, because I've been using the internet for so many years, my mind is sort of, you know, it's, it's plus, you know, that neuroplasticity. So it sort of like rewired itself to only have a quick, uh, like the attention span is not very quick. So I want to retrain my brain to, uh, you know, to, um, yeah, that's, that's really bad. Um, you know, um, have a bigger attention span and um, yeah that, that's what I want to do because uh, I think there is a lot I don't know when you slow things down when life becomes slower and you can notice things around you notice it's a state of being rather than doing Yes, I want to. I want to spend more time being, rather than doing or attempting to do. 
and being to do and do and do. Mm, yeah, um, that's what I want to do. I mean, be. Let's this as a weekly vlog. So I'm wearing this other skirt. Like this is another sort of uh, skirt I have. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not the. I have two black skirts which I like this, but this is another one. Another one which I have. Uh, so that's what I'm doing. I'm not doing this. Too much. Oh, mm, you're tired, and um, oh. hope I can get, get some hair growing. It's really, I mean, uh, there's something they just can't do. Maybe the hair. I don't know. This is gone. I don't know. Some is growing, but you know, sometimes I can feel something like here. <laughs> I don't want to laugh, it's, it kind of sucks. Um, well, there are so many positive things to my transition, you know, but uh, yeah, that one's one of the not so positive, but. You know, look on the bright side, at least hair is growing back here, you know, it's, you know all of this is re you know, regrown. This side is okay, you know, this side is okay, it's not too bad. But, uh, yeah, anyway. So I can live with that or I can get a hair transplant, but I don't want to get a hair transplant. I don't know. I don't have any money. <laughs> well, that's another thing, kind of. I don't know about this job thing. Uh, I applied for some jobs and got some feedback, and uh, I feel very depressed about that. And uh, I'm gonna work on that or figure out how that is going to proceed. Maybe if I can get my uh, more disciplined, I could do something. But, uh, well, I've been eating my veggie stew for the past few days, so that's good. Well, that's, you know, so that's what I'm going to work on. Self-care, self-discipline, and f focus on being rather than doing, because, uh, you know, I've tried to pray, but prayer, prayer is one of those things where you are being, you're not doing, you're being, and that's kind of difficult for me at the moment. Uh, so, you know. Yeah. So, I'm going to leave it there, and uh, yeah. Alright, so I'll try and go to the RCIA session too, and uh, see how that goes. Uh, 3.50 and I was talking all this time and it wasn't recording. <laughs> so anyway, I finished my second um, session. Uh, I met the priest, so that was uh, good. I, he opened the door, so, you know, that was good. All right, we talked a bit about my spiritual like where I am anytime we had a prayer and you know I, I you know I talked about like how I feel very, I feel very distracted it's hard for me to pray and things but um so you know we talked about like how no I, I, I you know I said that I needed to spend less time on the internet and spend more time 
uh, you know, reading the Bible and praying and things like that. Um, anyway, anyway, so uh, yeah, I'll be going to the mosque next. Um, This is next Wednesday morning. That'll be my first mass, hopefully. Mass, mass. Uh, and then I'll be having my session after the mass. Oh, I did have a tour of the church. Uh, uh, got to look at some of the books. It's a missal. Some big books. They look ancient. I don't know. Books are so nice. I, I miss. That's a, that's one of the reasons I used to buy books is because books are so nice. They they look nice and. There's a difference between reading something on. Oh, sorry for speaking. There's a difference between reading something on the computer uh, screen or uh, phone screen, and then actually feeling a book in your hand and the words on the page. There's a whole tactile thing to it, uh, which is different. Um, so anyway, so finish my second session. Um, yeah, next week uh, Wednesday at 9 a.m. Of the morning mass, I think it's mass, and then uh, yeah, have my other session after that. <sighs> anyway, all right, okay. So it's two ten p.m. Thursday, thirtieth of August, twenty eighteen. I'm getting ready to. Go to the uh, job agency to meet my counselor. They actually, um, they actually moved um, offices, so it's gonna be closer to the train station, but it's not that far from the old office. It's pretty, yeah, it's more like five minutes walk or something from the old office so it's not like a major thing <sighs> but uh, yeah and so um i did some things today i did I started my voice practice prepared my veggies so i've been um I've been uh, eating my veggie stew for the past few days, so that's good. Uh, yeah, so that's good. Um, I'm just uh, starting to read the Bible and starting to pray. I actually ordered a simple prayer book. It's like a book of... <laughs> There is this thing called Liturgy of the Hours, which is like a daily prayer Catholics use. It's like morning, evening, night, and there are even afternoon prayers. So it's, it's basically like you do these prayers throughout the day and your day is like <laughs> meaningful or I think they, I heard the term sanctify the time or something. Um, so yeah. I want to try and do some of that prayer. Um, so, <clears throat> I saw a video on Carmelite spirituality, and uh, I've link that video below. It's, uh, the reason I bring that up is because the church I go to, um, I think they are run by Carmelites. Carmelites are like a religious order. So, uh, I'm learning this stuff. It's like the, you know, you've got Franciscans, Benedict, whatever, <laughs> all of those, and the, and the poor Clares. These are like religious orders. They are Catholic, but they, they're, they're sort of like their own kind of order. They've got their own rules and things. So, you know, the Carmelites are, they call Carmelites because the first people who founded this, they were like hermits and they they found founded their hermitage. They were, they were like lay people, 
who found it's it founded their place of worship in Mount Carmel, which is in uh, Israel, I think, or Palestine. Um, Israel. Um, uh, so, um, so they've got this or oh, rules and things like. So Carmelites are focused on prayer uh, and community and service. They also focus on justice and justice and peace and I don't know. So I feel like um, I think I feel like God brought me here <laughs> because out of all the emails I sent, this parish was the only one who responded. And the funny thing is, uh, I, I, as I was seeing that video, I did some, some Google research on that person who was giving the because he mentioned something about like how. Carmelites uh, reach out to marginalized people and he also mentioned LGBT people so apparently the, in, in England in the diocese or region of Middlesbrough Middlesbrough I think, I think that's how you pronounce it uh, there's this uh, mission of uh, where the Catholic Church has a ministry uh, to reach LGBT people. So that made me feel better. So it makes me feel confident that, oh yeah, you know, maybe some area churches aren't welcoming, but other churches are. So like, the reason they actually set up the ministry was to, uh, because in the past, the church has, you know, maybe perhaps rejected or not been so welcoming to LGBT people. So this is to sort of remedy that kind of neglect. And so I mean, with that ministry, it was I think it was shank sanctioned by the church or the bishop or something. Um, anyway, so I will link that video and I also perhaps link the LGBT ministry website. Um, yeah. So maybe I'll also put a link to the Carmelite, like the Australian Carmelite website. You might get some information on the Carmelite rules and things, if anyone is interested. So, um, so yeah, I've been watching, I'm trying to learn more about those things. <sighs> Doing that, those kinds of things. Uh, mm. Um, yeah, so I gotta go to this counseling session and what else am I doing? Uh, so I'm trying to learn more about Catholicism um, because we've got lots of things you know how this is how is it you know like prayer and they've got all these different prayers and it's very formal very structured and uh, you know but you know what I'll do I was thinking that maybe I will make a separate video tomorrow where I go through all these websites and things which I've been um, sort of browsing so then that'll be better than me just sort of mentioning it here um yeah maybe i'll do that tomorrow i think <laughs> so yes uh, hopefully the uh appointment will uh, this is so bad this is so horrible oh, so horrible mm. I know they've got these uh, centers here which help to regrow hair or something. Maybe I'll have to go to there if I can get money. I don't know. It's so bad. It's so bad. See, this side is not so bad, but look at this side. It's, it's bad. It's really... It's... Oh, yeah. So I've been also looking at dresses, 
Say bye and thanks. Anyway, so I'll, uh, yeah, I'll end it now and I'll come back later. Okay, so I finished the session. I talked a, a good, good conversation. Um, I talked about, uh, I talked a lot about um, my spiritual thing. I talked about going to the church and talked about Carmelite and what that is and yeah, all that stuff. And uh, then we talked about like how, you know, like I had this conversation about a job application and I, how I felt like I didn't feel like I wanted to work. I basically said, you know, I don't, I don't feel like working, but I feel guilty because I'm taking the government's money and I don't feel good about that. And then she said, that's it's okay to feel both things. It's okay to feel guilty that, I don't, you know, I'm taking this money and not genuinely looking for it and the other thing is but at the same time I do feel anxious and uh, sensitive to rejection and um, all of that stuff so it's understandable that I feel both things it's okay to feel conflicted about both it's okay to have them both I don't need to just feel one way or the other uh, and uh, you know we talked about like how I'm challenging myself by going out of my comfort zone you know by going to the church and doing things out of my comfort zone um, somebody just got out of the car anyway um, so it was a. Uh, I think I, I learned something about having. It's okay to have two contradictory, or uh, you know, like feeling gu feeling guilty about not feeling like I want to work, and at the same time, I really feel anxious. Really feel like I just cannot handle it. You know, I told her like you know I feel like I have. I can understand why a person will be homeless because I feel like I can, uh, you know, maybe, uh, I don't know, I guess one of the reasons I am, uh, don't feel like working is because, uh, I don't know, I am sort of comfortable where I am, but I'm also trying to challenge myself, like, by you know going to the church and going to the appointments so I'm challenging myself that's a wind, windscreen wiper and uh, so hopefully one day I will challenge myself to work as well because I do want to do things with my life I do want to live a meaningful life because that would that's what I want to do um, so hopefully one day I can uh, really challenge myself in that area of working. And she also said that like because uh, you know how I think like how I can't handle the pressure and all that. That might be like from the past. In the past I might have felt that way and I'm sort of bringing the past into the present and that sort of allowing me to self-sabotage because if I think that I'm never gonna, I'm gonna I can't handle it and then that would self-sabotage by not being uh, fully like I want to get the job self-sabotage and in my opportunity of getting the job because I already believe that it's going to be stressful and it's gonna be very negative and that might have happened in the past but it doesn't necessarily have to happen in the future so um, anyway so what I've learned is I, I, I am making progress and I can open myself up to the possibility of challenging myself in the area of work where I can think about hey maybe I can work maybe 
you know, and also so we'll talk about like how it's not that I don't want to work. It's that I want. It depends on the job. You know, I don't want to work in a job where it's like corporate or just making money or something. I'd like to work in a job where you're helping people. You know, and maybe that could be a legal thing. Maybe I could work for some legal aid type thing. You know, or a community legal center. Hmm, maybe I could do that. Um, this is something about helping people and you know something that's meaningful like that oh, such a traffic anyway so th that's my feedback and yeah okay so it's uh, <laughs> 7 and 11 p.m. Uh, Friday 31st August 2018 so I said I would uh, make a video about some of the resources on oh, um, um, well, some of the stuff I've been uh, looking at or interested in. So this is a website. It's called theologyofthebody.net. Uh, I only I haven't really explored this, uh, but. If you're interested in theology of the body, which is something uh, uh, created or promulgated by Saint John Paul II uh, during his papal see, so this this I think it goes into it a bit more detail. I think, uh, and then um, so the the theology of the body is, is like a, a series of talks which. Uh, John Paul II, when he was Pope, uh, he started this talk on 5th September 1979, and he did all these talks, uh, like how many talks? 129 talks. Uh, so he, he, this is, um, so he's, he's, he's known for this kind of, uh, I don't know what you would call it, a, um, some kind of a book or an, or an idea or a treatise, a treatise, um, where he talks about like how, uh, as well, I, I, I don't know much about it, <laughs> but if you want to, so I think I've read the first one, uh, it, it, talks, it talks about the beginning and what does that mean and what is it? So, yeah. so he goes through the whole thing. Uh, so, so, you know, if you're interested in that, can you, one thing I've noticed about his writing is that his writing is not easy to read. It's like um, lots of. Yeah. You see, you see, because. There's a lot of men, like there's a type of writing which is very factual, right? Uh, that would be like scientific writings are factual, whereas his, this writing, there's a lot of, uh, I feel like there's a lot of depth to it. Uh, um, so it's not just, it's not like a fact thing. It's, he's not trying to describe facts. He's trying to convey meaning of some uh, higher thing. I don't know if I explain it properly. Uh, yeah, okay. So this is a, a good site. It's the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops. And th this is, uh, I, found, I found it good if you want to know what, what the church is about. Like, they have a lot of, they really have lots of explanations about everything. Do we, it's like, if you want to, you know, all these basic stuff. So, you know, if you want to know what the Mass is about, uh, you know, look at all this stuff. Liturgy of the Word. Uh, so you can learn a lot about uh, Catholicism from this side. I find it quite useful. Um, this one is, do I have a vacation that comes? I was searching for, uh, you know, I was... Uh, I don't think I will uh, be 
uh, pursuing a vocation in, in the Catholic Church. I think I'm going to probably be a lay person. But I was uh, looking at all of these vocations. So this is a vocation of being a consecrated virgin, and you can be a consecrated hermit. So this is like um, this person. Uh, she writes a lot about uh, what she has. A, I found her writings to be like. Um, like you know, she, she 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 provides good information. You know, so this is a primer primer on chastity, virginity, continence for Catholics. But she 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 has all these um all these different um she goes into sort of explains it. Um, you know, so I haven't really uh, read much about it. But uh, I think this is a useful site if you're interested in finding out about uh, living a consecrated life. Uh, and consecrated life is like, you know, if you you can be a priest or a nun or a sister or a brother, or you can be a uh, consecrated hermit, a consecrated virgin, a consecrated lay person. Um, uh, is this, you know, if you have, if you want to be single and stuff. All right, so this, so I was, uh, you know, this is a, this is a site run by this couple who who used to be a priest and a uh, nun, I think, and they later got married, and now they both live as hermits, and the the. The lady she wrote it wrote this book uh, about uh, Saint, what's her name, Claire of Assisi, so, and they 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 publish a newsletter uh, about um, the living a hermit life. And they got you know lots of resor resources on if you want to be a hermit, and they're kind of open. They're not be limiting themselves to Catholicism. You can even be like a uh, secular person, uh, but actually, you, you should be some kind of. They, I guess the way they would define a hermit is uh, like they actually define a hermit somewhere. Where, uh, let me read it. Okay, the simplest def definition of a hermit or spiritual solitary is someone who lives alone by choice for spiritual reasons. Uh, so they do it for some, so that's the requirement, spiritual reason. They actually use the wrong word here. I think they were trying to go for a misanthrope. <laughs> so this broad description excludes those individuals who live alone through unwanted circumstances, as well as misogynists who dislike society in general. I think that they were going, I think the word should be misanthropes not misogynists because misogynists is a hater of women i think what they're talking about is as well as misanthropes who dislike society in general i think i don't think that that's the appropriate word it doesn't seem like that's appropriate right it seems who dislike society in general if you dislike society then i think that, that the word should be misanthrope that's my sort of clarification but hey i don't know maybe they use this word um, i don't know uh, uh, I don't think that's appropriate. We are speaking of deeply spiritual individuals who are seeking a lifestyle where they can achieve personal transparency to the divine. They are not selfish individuals merely seeking their own comfort, but rather passionate lovers of humanity who, through their lives of prayer, foster a compassionate care for all their brothers and sisters. They become the still point, the strong center, which holds together a world threatening to fly apart. Uh, anyway, so that's the resource, resource for if you want to be a hermit, for spiritual reasons. So this is uh, uh, the website of the Carmelites. And the Carmelites are like a religious order. Uh, and um, they are Catholics, but they're like a religious order within the Catholic Church. So the church I'm going to is, I think they, they are Carmelites as well. So this website uh, contains a lot of uh, you know, information I found about us. So, you know, you know who are the Carmelites? Who are the Carmelites? They, 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 you know. 
to explain that. Come back to Australia, Timor, last day. Uh, they have the Carmelite rules, which is a, which is good here. So this is a. So Albert Avogadro, and he gave this rule. Patriarch of Jer Jerusalem between the years 1206 to 1214. So the rule was approved by Pope Innocent. Uh, okay. Mm. So the Carmelite rule states that states that is basic for a Carmelite to quote live a life of allegiance to Jesus Christ. How pure in heart and stout in conscience he must be unswerving in the service of his master number two. So um so the rule is not that big. Uh, uh okay. Alright, so anyway, so this is an interesting, okay, so these must be some of the friars or brothers of the Carmelite order. So the Carmelites, they're, they're divided into two groups. Uh, you got the displaced Carmelites, uh, which is like, uh, I don't know if that's the right way to put it. I think the, the original Carmelites, their patron saints are Mary and Elijah. Mary the mother, Mary, Mary, Mary mother of Jesus, and the prophet Elijah. Uh, so, so if you want to know a little bit about the Carmelites, there's some good information there. And this is a website about traditional Catholic femininity. Uh, so I was looking for like uh, you know dresses, <laughs> modest dresses and stuff like that. Uh, so they have like you know, a lot of the things on traditional th stuff like oh they have a lot of stuff on vocations you know uh, so let me see here um they have a store uh, manly stuff I think. um no rosaries so they, I haven't checked that out yet. Uh, rosaries. I want to get a rosary for myself. I haven't got one. And uh, yeah, I see rosary. I also want to know how to pray the rosary. I think these are link clicks to Amazon. I think. Yeah. So they take you to Amazon, and all right. So that's one way to buy it. Oh my goodness, I have lost the website. Oh man, all right. Traditional Catholic. Okay. Um, all right, good. Yeah. All right. Um, all right, so let's go back to that store again. So, I. So, you know, I, I was thinking, oh, they got some nice dresses, uh, you know, like, like, you know, some of these dresses, uh, I, you know, and they could go straight to Amazon, like, like, for instance, this seems like a nice dress, I, I, and they're not very expensive, like $37.29, you know, seems like a nice dress to me, oh, this is like a nice dress, I think, that was a nice dress. Uh, oh, am I gonna close that? Oh no, okay, good. Uh, so you know, uh, so there's some links to some nice dresses here. Forgot to zoom. I saw, I saw one really, one really good one over here. Mm. Oh, that, that one was a bit expensive. Well, this one was really good looking. Like uh, you know, it has a gothic flavor to it. 
And you know, it's thirty eight ninety five five way rice shipping to where I live. Um well blue blue is like for Mary. Blue symbolizes Mary for I think the blue symbolizes Mary or chastity. I think blue symbolizes Mary. But uh, you know you can choose different colors and, and styles of anyway, so that's an uh, okay nice website for uh, kind of uh, uh what is this man what is this manly I haven't checked on that. Uh so they, they talk about traditional roles for men oh the art of manliness the gentleman's book of etiquette huh oh, so this is trying to teach men to be men uh, yeah so it's, it's about traditional manhood womanhood and things like that uh, oh, I'm getting slightly dysphoric <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, anyway, yes, I think men should be men. I, I would support that. I would definitely support men being men. But you know, because of my trans history, I get, I get a bit. Uh, I want to be around women. I want to be. <laughs> I like men. I like I like men being men. I like men. Um, oh, I guess feminism. Ew. Oh, this looks interesting. Consecrated single life, religious life. Huh, these are interesting books, I think. Oh. Hmm. Anyway, so, um, no, oh, another thing I wanted to mention was that uh, there's this thing called the Liturgy of the Hours. And this, this is like you play, I mean, you pray uh, like in the morning, uh, afternoon. Oh, look, there's morning prayer, daytime prayer, evening prayer, night prayer. And this is called Vespers. So it's like you pray at, at each of these times. And it's like the, 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 it'll, it'll give you the text to actually do the prayer. Um, and I have an uh, an app on my phone which actually gives me the what 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 do I have to pray. So you know, so that's uh, you know, it's some of the stuff here. So um, I'll provide the links to all of these, and also the link to that video on caramel lines. Oh, I want, another thing I wanted to mention was the LGBT thing, right? LGBT middles bra. Hmm. What is it? Ministry. I think this is the one. Yeah. Uh, this is yes. This is a outreach for LGBT people. Um. So this is part of the Carmelites, I think. I don't know. I'm sure I remember the resources and things. Hmm. Building a bridge. Uh, die season website. Oh, I'm, I'm doing this live. I'm doing this live, people. Anti LGBT plus ministry. This is 20, January 24, 2018. Huh. Oh, so they celebrated, celebrated mass for LGBT people. So that's good. So, you know, I've been trying to learn a lot about this. You know, Catholicism. Oh, look. Among the experiences shared was that of a young man who stopped attending mass as a teenager, not because he had lost his faith, but because he felt his parish community would not accept him. He was very pleased at the launch of the new ministry, which he felt gave him the opportunity to start attending mass again. Uh, okay, so that's okay, that's good. So, you know, that makes me feel more confident that, yes, I can be Catholic and transgender and, you know, I can, um, 
that go to church. I mean, I already told uh, the people, uh, the person I was there, I am trans, she knows I'm trans. I think the priest might even know, I don't know. Because uh, he, he, he did ask me some questions. Oh, I told my, uh, the person I'm talking to something about, you know, I said, Oh, I, I came to the church before and I met the priest and when I, when I went to the meeting last time the priest said so you you, uh, you came here before did you so she must have said something to him so <sighs> anyway so that's my video and yes I'll post this on Sunday Sunday at 10 a.m. Uh, probably but maybe uh, if I start going to mass on Sundays, I will start posting it at 6 p.m. maybe. So, but this Sunday I will post it at 10 a.m. But in the future, I might move that to 6 p.m. Uh, anyway, all right. Okay, so. <clears throat> it's 3.08 p.m. Saturday for September 2018. I had a diet fail yesterday and today. Didn't eat my veggie stew. <coughs> so I want to talk about. I'm making a confession. It's about. Uh, sin, sexuality, and Catholicism. So, uh, I committed a, the sin of having sexual fantasies. Uh, I feel. So I felt guilty about that. So I thought I'll uh, make a video to clear things up. Um, so, um, I mean, there are lots of sins I struggle with, but, um, when it comes to sexual sins, my sin is fantasy, uh, indulging in fantasies, sexual fantasies of a BDSM type nature, where there is humiliation and degradation and uh, usually with men uh, um, where I am the passive participant if you get the drift um, so the reason I want to bring that up is because I've been seeing a lot of videos on this, uh, you know, the scandal, the um, sex abuse scandal. Um, anyway, so, so, um, so I've been seeing lots of videos on it. Um, I don't know if I want to go through the videos. Uh, so my understanding so far is that there was this report that came out in Pennsylvania where it was, I think they found that over a 60 year period, about 300 priests in this, in maybe six dioceses in Pennsylvania, molested about 1,000 children. Now, what they want to cl clarify is that 80, almost 85% of the victims were male, post-pubescent boys. So they were over the age of 12. And um, so there is this whole issue about homosexuality in the priesthood. Um, because most of the victims were post-pubescent boys, uh, it's not really pedophilia, right? <clears throat> and uh, so 
there's this whole thing about like how in the with the Vatican too, there was the influx of liberalism and then all these homosexuals got into the church and they started appointing bishops and cardinals and that's why the there's a lot of corruption in seminaries where there is a gay culture in the seminaries and people get blackmailed and things so anyway so this is like uh, this is stuff that's a problem in the church but the main reason i wanted to make this video is you know my no, I've been spending a lot of time inquiring, uh, you know, studying about Catholicism and trying to pray and read the Bible. But I have been, uh, for some strange reason, having all these sexual fantasies for some reason. I don't know why. Is it like some kind of a... Uh, and they usually happen when I feel like I'm self-sabotaging, right? So if I, like, if I'm really hopeful and positive and optimistic and working hard on something, uh, you, know, you know, trying to do, you know, study this Catholic faith, and then every now and then I'll get this kind of uh, self-sabotaging kind of attitude or fantasy where I'm like, oh, you know, where I'm in a position of being de degraded and humiliated and basically like, oh, you're worthless, you're nothing, uh, you have no value, you, st you know, like this kind of uh, self-talk. And sometimes it involves sexual stuff, like, you know, uh, anyway. So, um, I don't know why, why I get that. Uh, so I just wanted to mention that. So what, what do I think? I think the, um, I'm coming to sort of uh, understand more about Catholicism. And uh, I feel like I'm on a journey to become a Catholic. And... Uh, I, I would, uh, so why would I be a Catholic? Because I, because I think it's the church set up by Jesus Christ. And when he said, uh, you are Peter and on this rock I will build my church. And, uh, you know, I mean, the popes aren't uh, perfect people. They're human beings. I mean, throughout the Bible, a lot of the people <laughs> spoken about in the Bible were sinners, you know. It's not like they were all perfect human beings. A lot of them were sinners, they were murderers, adulterers, and all of these things, so, um, yeah, so human beings have all these problems. Um, so, uh, and, you know, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I, I think I might choose a single lay life, uh, like, be a lay person, or a man, you know, and ch live a single chaste life like uh, chastity and celibacy and they're not a, they're not the same thing celibacy is different from chastity they do overlap but chastity is just a way of even married people have to be chaste uh, but celibacy is like you know it's not it's I mean the uh, philosophers talk about like how am my sexuality even though I do have these sexual fantasies every, every now and then uh, my my sexuality is quite um like I am a sexual person because all human beings are sexual, but my libido is very low and it's not something I think about often or something. Uh, so it's easier for me to be celibate. It really is very easy for me to be celibate. You know, I don't, I don't, to be frank, I don't, I don't masturbate. I don't look at porn. I don't, I don't like porn. That's something also I should mention is like, my, my sin is not pornography. It's sexual fantasy. It's a... It's a psychological thing. <laughs> um, and, and I just want to say, like, you know how they say that men are visual and women are more mental? And I, you might think that's a stereotype, but frankly, these days, my fantasies are very psychological and mental. Then they don't really, are not that visual. They're more, more about, like, situations in my mind and things like that so I think there's some truth to that stereotype it might be real I think so anyway so uh, yeah well, I struggle with the sin of sexual fantasy and also I also tend to sometimes share my fantasies on social media which is also something I should probably not do um, I'm, I have a FetLife account and on that account I have some 
images and videos of uh, me being sexual or something. <laughs> um, but they were made a while ago. But I mean, should I delete them because I'm now pursuing Catholicism? I don't know about that because I, I don't want to delete my history online. I feel like you know they're part of my past. I don't feel like I've got to hide and delete things. I don't feel like I need to. Um, so that's what I wanted to talk about. Uh, maybe I will talk about the... Maybe I'll make a series of videos called My Catholic Journey where, uh, you know, I'll make these vlogs as vlogs. But then maybe I might also make videos specifically, specifically, specifically about Catholicism and what I'm learning. And I'll put them as, so, you know, be like a, my own journey of Catholicism and uh, things I'm learning and I can share if someone's interested. Maybe, who knows, someone in the future might come across my play playlist and go, oh, oh, this person is going on a journey. Maybe it could, it could even be a trans person or, or an LGBT person. Um, so, yeah. So, um, yeah, I think, um, you know, I, I believe that the Catholic, uh, Catholic teachings, uh, teach, uh, church's teachings on sexual, sexual ethics is, you know, I, 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 I am aligning myself with that teaching. So, um, you know, sex is between ma uh, two people who are married, man and a woman. I don't, I don't believe in, I know that it sounds so difficult in our culture, which is so, in the secular culture, which is so not like that. But, um, you know, there was this video by this, uh, there was this really good podcast called Pints with Aquinas or something, and he was doing this interview with this uh, gay man who talked about, like, uh, you know, he, he's now a celibate or and chaste Catholic. He talks about, like, how he had these struggles, and um, so they had a very frank discussion about the whole priest thing. Uh, so maybe I might put uh, those, uh, I still haven't finished watching the, f he made three videos, this, um, I think his name is, um, anyway, Matt Farrad or something. I will link three of his videos. Uh, he made three videos on this whole church abuse scandal. Um, so uh, the first video, I haven't finished watching it, but I will link it anyway. It's called... Uh, the homosexual problem in the priesthood with Dan Matson. Dan Matson is this, is a gay man, and he talks about his, uh, you know, how he struggled with his homosexuality and how he uh, aligned himself with the sexuality of the Catholic Church. Um, the thing is, the Catholic Church has, uh, in its catechism, it has a statements on homosexuality it says that homosexual persons should be ch chaste but the catholic church doesn't really have anything official like that on being transgender um now because transgender is about gender identity it's not about having sex or sexuality but um so my view is that i as far as being a trans person my view is that I won't, I, I'm not going to try, I'm, I'm not, I, don't, I think chastity is okay, uh, but as far as being trans, sh uh, the only question is, the, the, when it comes to transgender issues, the only question is should a person transition, and as to that question, I think, I think that should be, at this, since the church doesn't have an official statement, except I think the U.S. Conference on Catholic Bishops, they release a statement about transgender children, but as uh, um, but as far as adults are concerned, I have I, I feel like um, yeah I feel like people should uh, make that it's not a it's a it's a very serious decision and. It, it really depends on the circumstances you find yourself in. If you feel like you have to trans transition, transition. But there are consequences to transitioning. Not everyone's going to accept you. And, and and I don't think the church should accept. Like, I don't think 
I have a right to ask the Catholic Church to validate my transition or gender identity. Um, because I am just one person. Oh, let me put it this way. I think the greater good of the church's mission is more important than my gender identity. So um, I'm not going to demand that the church respect my gender identity. But I, I feel like, you know, so like where I am, those people seem to be welcoming. So I guess, you know, this is not like a very... I don't have a real... I don't have my thoughts really formed on this, but uh, those are my opinions so far. Because the church really doesn't have an official position on transgender, except the Pope says the, uh, the I think Benedict said something like Pope Benedict. The, the, the human beings are made male and female, but he really doesn't. I mean, yeah, I I agree, male and female, but uh, the thing is like, what makes male, what makes female, and that's where this whole discussion goes into. Um, anyway, um, so that's my video, and yeah, I'll link those three videos. There are more videos I've been watching on this, but I will link those three. Uh, anyway, so... Yeah, um... Uh, this is, you know, most of my, um, okay, I'll, I'll go through my, uh, feed, uh, YouTube history feed, I don't know if, I feel like I'm just confessing or something, I don't know what is it. Okay, so, this is my YouTube watch history, mm, history, history, uh, okay, so, I so I've been seeing a lot of videos by this person in Catholic mom's life. Um, uh, just a very sincere, positive. Gregorian chant. She mentioned something about prayer. Something, and this is an interesting video. Vegano please vegano, please Francis's homosexual cabal, and I um. What Catholics believe is yeah, the red line shows how much I've seen. Um, this is a good video. This is a good video where he sort of outlines that whole modernism and the priest here. He doesn't. He rejects the Second Vatican Council. Um, what happened afterwards? Because he thinks that that what's led to this whole sexual abuse problem. Oh, this is a. So this is a video the homosexual problem in the priesthood, my friend. So, you know the, the the red line shows. I've seen bits and pieces here and there. But I have to finish watching them. So pro life, uh, yeah, I do support that. So I don't know. I, I clicked on this video in the morning because I didn't know who this person was. So I just wanted to know who this person was. I'm like, oh yeah. Anyway. I still have shorts, and there's this whole thing about modesty and things, so I was like, uh, I don't know. Uh, so, uh, is that, I feel guilty clicking that video, wait a minute, is that immodest, is that, uh, am I, anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway, so I just saw the first minute or something. Um, anyway, um, uh, so how to pray the rosary, uh, I mean, am I a sinner? Oh, no. Um, you know, I still feel, as a, even as a trans woman, I still feel like, um, uh, I'm still like, um, how do you call it? I feel like I still, uh, like, I don't know, I feel like, I feel so not confident in my femininity. I still, you know, I still get like, I don't want to, I don't want to, like, I don't want to like girls or, or or in that way because then that'll undermine my womanhood. But it's kind of, you know, <laughs> but it's weird because as a, as my transition has progressed, I I find myself more attracted to men. Um, but in the past, I did find women attractive, but that's, 
it's also confusing because my psychology is very much like a, a girl's psychology. So it's, it's like, I don't know. It's just, I still feel like because I have this very anti-sex, anti-sexuality attitude, I mean, it's something that I've had since I was a, a very young. I don't know why I've had it, you know, my siblings really, I don't know, I don't think they have it. But um, anyway, so I feel like, I don't know, I feel conflicted and confused and ashamed and I don't know. So, um, such a complicated topic that, uh, you know, gender, sexuality and identity and ugh, all of this. <sighs> Being a Catholic or trying to be a Catholic on top of all that. So, um, so this video, uh, I'm, I want to get, I'm, I'm thinking of getting some of the stuff she suggested, like a rosary and a, the sacred heart of Jesus. Like there's this website I found, they, they, they make very good prints and you can frame them. So here's, an, you know, lot, lots of videos and I've been seeing a lot of conversion videos, just a little bit of that. So, you know, this is another good video where they talk about this whole Pope Francis thing and more about the whole uh, abuse thing. This is about pr uh, this, this is called, I think called Lectio Divina, is a type of prayer where um it's a type of prayer uh, and he this this video that he this, this guy this person this father he, he talks about it um you know more about that whole scandal and this is a bishop in australia he's a carmelite but um he is a disgrace carmelite it's not it's, it's not disgrace it's 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 a very good word. It, it's, it's, he's, he's one of he's, he's one of the other uh, like Carmelites have two groups, right? Uh, like my church is uh, the old group, and this is a group which sort of broke off. And this is another video on this prayer, like Tio Divina. Uh, I think lots of things on the monks and this. And so I liked this this priest channel. He's a hermit and he's a monk. Um, so I was looking about this phone because when I went to my job agency the other day, when I was walking to the job agency, I heard this, these footsteps of this, someone running behind me and I just stopped and turned around and I, just, I seriously thought someone was going to grab my bag and, and take my, like, steal my bag or something. It was really kind of traumatic. Uh, so this guy was just running beside me. And then I, th I thought to myself, if I lost my phone, like that'd be a big big thing so i was thinking like maybe i should buy a cheap phone and just carry that outside uh so this is i still haven't finished watching this liturgy of the hours i really i just subscribed to this channel uh, on bpd and so i've been watching a lot of things like that yeah, so a little bit of that view I don't know, I just clicked on this video, but I haven't really seen it. Um, so, what have I been really watching? Oh, she's like a hermit, Catholic hermit. Uh, oh, this is a stupid video from the Amazing Atheist. It's like, oh, I don't know, I'm just... Uh, so I wish I didn't have to see that. I wish I did it. So, I didn't know what the whole thing was about. I was like, oh, alright. Um, this is a good video, so I've been, oh, you know, just a trans women's video. Um, so, let's, oh, this is about that shooting. I haven't really seen that video in full. So, that's what I've been mainly watching. Oh, there's a new YouTuber, like a libertarian, I think. I'm not, I'm not a fan of libertarianism, but anyway. Uh, that's what I've been. Oh, he's a hermit, Catholic hermit, I think. Uh, oh yeah, I saw lots of videos on this consecrated virginity, what that was, and consecrated hermits. Uh, yeah, this is she's a oh she's a consecrated virgin, I think. Yeah. Um, so um, that's what I've been mainly. Oh yeah. She's a she's a tra intersex person actually, and she's a really why I rejected the LGBT community and 
I feel like I could uh, relate to a lot of that, except that she ends the video by saying, oh, trans is like a psychological problem or something. I, I don't know, that sounded a bit dis dismissive, but, but I do think the LGBT community can be very aggressive with their push. She's actually, she actually tried to be a nun, but then she realized like, oh, you know, I don't, I don't want to be a nun or something. Uh, uh, he makes good, good videos on... Uh, church history and things so oh you know trans women i don't think i've really seen i didn't i don't think i saw the whole video uh yeah all right uh so yeah this is what i've been doing so most of the videos on catholicism really i mean i, I mean i just learn everything uh, okay, and BPD and Lulu's day. Okay, I will leave it there. And yeah. What? Why, why, can't, why can't I stop it? <laughs>